Yeah, it's a beautiful little loop. It's like 7,300 feet up here too, so. We call, it, we call it Kilty Loop. Who discovered it? Like, how has it become a... Well, there was a, a woman on our team. She was one of our original team members, a really good runner, Amy Van Alstein. She rented a house, her and her boyfriend, just down the road. So they found it. And uh, it's up a little higher. And it's kind of out of the way. And it's sort of a quiet neighborhood, so we're not really bothering anybody. A lot of, a lot of these homes are second homes anyway. And yeah, it just works out really well. And it's got a little bit of up and down to it. So it's nice, depending on what you're training for. For example, Kellen in New York, it's never really flat in New York, always something. And so this loop always has uh, something going on. Okay, so you'll start at that, where we always start down there. Mm -hmm. And it's 12, it's really 12 by half mile. Um, so you'll stop at a half mile, you'll take a minute rest, and then you'll go do this one, right? And then you'll turn around and come back. So that way we're getting four different 800s. So you know, the 800 on the first one is before you make that left. Then you stop there, minute rest. Then the second eight will end right there at the, at the mile, right? Then you have a minute and then you come back, and then you'll just go backwards. Yeah. All right, so whenever you're ready. Here we go. Use the marks and stay on pace. It's gonna be harder than you think. I think this one will be more challenging than she thinks. She, she thinks, oh, 800 is easy. But uh, 240, 800s up here at this height, or at this elevation, at this, uh, with this terrain, they're not totally easy. She'll, it'll be challenging. We don't usually take long rests, only every once in a long while. And uh, sometimes we'll jog rest, but today, just with the way this loop works, and like I said, it's pretty fast, so I think, and we're pretty high, so I think a minute rest is good. Uh, well, it's early in the segment. Um, she's doing these at 110 half marathon pace. So that's pretty fast, you know, for marathon segment, but it's early. So we're more likely to do some of the faster stuff early in the marathon segment and then the longer, more specific stuff later. You know, it's just kind of the opposite of the traditional, <laughs> I guess, way a segment is structured if you're a 5K or something, you know, like high school athletes are probably used to their longer stuff earlier and their faster stuff later, but that's only because you're trying to be specific later. So for, for the marathon, the specific stuff is 16 miles of marathon pace. Uh, so you do this, this stuff a little earlier. Uh, you can see how this is good for New York, huh? Yeah. Always going up or down. Yeah, when you do that three mile, you know, you'll go like this and then you'll have this. Yeah, the actual. Yeah, that inside part. What do you take from what you guys did on the track and how did that fit in the plan for this fall? It gives her a lot of confidence for sure because she ran well in a big championship. I mean that was that was uh, my biggest hope and takeaway. My biggest hope going in and then my biggest takeaway coming out was that uh, we'd have a race where she competed with, right with the people that she may have to then compete with at the trials, which she did. So she was right there with Molly, she gave Emily all she could handle, and that's in an event that's, I mean, she's very good at the 10,000, but I think she would consider the marathon her best event. So I'm of the belief that it will have given her a lot of confidence. Um, I hadn't really had a track season since the trials in 2016, um, so it was nice to be able to go out there and experience kind of what it feels like again to go out and compete against a fantastic field of ladies. Um, and obviously it was nice to be able to hang with Molly and Emily for such a long time, um, people who are obviously going to be prime contenders here next year. What's it like doing such short reps when you're in the marathon training season? I think it's good for the body. Um, you know, when we get into the bulk of the segment, it's all about the mileage and doing those long extended efforts. So doing these shorter ones, I think, kind of taxes a different system and, you know, gets you ready and primed for those longer ones. It was good because we're going to come out here two more times in this segment for her because I like it for New York. The next session will be 12 by a K 
uh, but then she's going to run a 5K fast at the end on this loop. And then two weeks after that, she'll run eight by a mile on this loop and then a 5K fast to finish. So basically that idea that at New York, I mean, it's all about those last, that last bit of the race, you know, when you're coming up Fifth Avenue and then you're in the park and you're up and down. And I think this course, especially when she has to go around this loop as well for the 5K, will simulate the end of New York. Turn. So you're doing a little bit side sticker type feeling. How did you manage that feeling throughout these 12 reps? I mean, I think all that you can do is just put it in the back of your mind. I think in the marathon you deal with a lot of different, um, your body's going through a lot of different things. A lot of the time you feel like crap during a marathon and you just kind of have to put it behind you and keep going and eventually, you know, it'll go away or you'll just get closer and closer to the finish until you're done. Um, so, kind of the same mentality for a workout. Um, you know, you don't want to stop and just call it quits because you can't do that in a race. I guess so, how did the workout feel today? Um, you know, I've had ones that have felt better, um, but I got it done, and that's kind of the biggest the biggest thing is just kind of putting the work in and getting it done. What are you focusing on to get yourself both physically and mentally prepared for New York? Well, right now it's kind of about building my mileage back up, um, coming off the break. Obviously, you don't want to jump right back up to 100 mile weeks. Um, so building my mileage back up and then just kind of priming my body for the stuff that's to come, because the real magic is going to happen here in, oh, four, four weeks or so. One step at a time, you know, New York is for first, so I'm kind of thinking about that, sites are set on that and the goals there, and then after that it's going to be 100% focus on the trials. I think that New York will be kind of a good um, platform to start from, building into the trials, um, just kind of getting my body ready uh, for another big segment, you know, four months later. Um, but really it's kind of its own individual thing. You know, I've got big goals for that and I want to go into that with 100% focus and, you know, see what I can do. What do you think you've developed from 2016 to now getting ready for 2020 in these four years to kind of get to your ultimate like potential? Experience. I think that's one of the biggest things you can have in the marathon is experience. You know, the more that you do, the more you learn about yourself and about the distance. So each one that I've done, I've walked away with a better understanding of my body and of the distance as a whole. Short and sweet. Yeah, I like those.